Don't scare them too much, right? Okay, no, you go ahead. No, would I, would I. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I think that was a pretty strong intro, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how, how things go. Anyway, I'm here to talk about the grid, which is uh, an artificial intelligence that does web design. A uh, little bit of background. Uh, I started working in, on the web in the early 90s. Oh, sorry. Early 90s, uh, when you know software came in cardboard boxes, computers would fill a full desk, and uh, the web was this wonderful uh, Wild West frontier where everything was possible. And yeah, I was building, I was building websites for all kinds of uh, associations, small companies, etc. And they all had this problem of, okay, we get the website, but how do we, how do we update it? You know, when we have a new product or an event or something, you know, people didn't want to learn HTML. And hence, uh, I end up building uh, with a couple of friends uh, one of the very first open source content management systems out there. But when we did that, uh, my assumption was, you know, this is going to be a temporary solution. Like, one of the big guys, maybe Adobe or Microsoft, they're going to figure out this website problem very soon. And, you know, we won't need any of this stuff anymore. But none of, none of that really happened. Like, if you look around, there are hundreds or thousands of uh, content management systems out there. Some of them are pretty big, let's say WordPress, but still people are building more and more. Uh, we, used to, we used to say that it's kind of a rite of passage for a web developer to write your own content management system. And the problem with these is that uh, with these, everything kind of looks the same because all these, all these tools, what they do is they take your content, they put it in a rectangle, and they put some stuff around it, a template, basically, a little bit of framing, and that's it. And that's why, you know, the web has actually uh, devolved into this very uniform, very, you know, everything's the same kind of place. Of course, there are still uh, places where, you know, you have beautiful custom designed pages. For instance, Apple's product launch sites are a good example of that. Uh, but the problem is, even if even if it would be uh, even if it would be possible for everybody to pay a designer to go and you know do custom custom design for their site for each product, the problem is there are not enough designers on this planet to actually do that. And so uh, the question question we asked with the grid was. Could we use these uh, emerging AI techniques that you just heard about? Could we use them to solve the problem? Could we build a AI-driven designer? Uh, AI has been used for a lot of other creative endeavors, like there's been music composed by AI algorithms. Uh, AIs can actually generate text nowadays pretty decently. Uh, and also, AIs can paint. Like, here's an example from a paper where they used famous paintings as a training set, and then they had an AI go and manipulate photos in the style of this and this artist or that and that artist. And as you can see, the results are not perfect, but pretty convincing. And uh, Google released this uh, deep dreaming tool where uh, the AI kind of hallucinates, it thinks it tries to draw into a picture what it thinks is there. And because you know, a lot of these algorithms have been trained on animals or humans, you get a lot of eyes and snouts and all these other features there. Stuff of, of nightmares, right? OK. But so far, you know, nobody had actually applied these creative AI techniques to web design. And that's basically what we set out to do with the grid. Uh, in a nutshell, like if you look from the high level, this is what the grid is. It's a designer in the machine. Uh, you provide a purpose for your website, some preferences and content. The machine does some work and out comes a website. Uh, 
to expand a little bit on that, like purpose is very important. Like when you have a website, you should think, why do you want to have that website? Like what do you want people who come to your website to do? Like do you want them to just read your things or listen to your music? Do you want them to buy something? Do you want them to subscribe to your newsletter? And if you can provide such a purpose for the website, then we can actually, our machine can optimize it for that purpose. We can learn, okay, these kinds of design decisions work well for a sales site, for instance. And then the other thing you can do is you can provide some uh, preferences. So you can tell, okay, these are my brand colors, this is my logo, uh, I want a more kind of artistic or more formal layout, uh, and all these things that basically what you're telling the designer, what kind of website would you like to have? And then, of course, content. Uh, there's many ways to get content into the system. Uh, you could drag and drop some documents in, uh, or you could use our API if you have stuff somewhere and you, you have developers. Uh, or then you can just use uh, the uh, editor in our app to write it. And of course, the other thing we, we really focused on is that you know, the web is built of links, sites linking to other sites. And we, we tried to make it really easy, like if you see some relevant content, to so just share it to your website and have it there with all the proper attributions to the original creator of that content. And yeah, the nice thing is, since, since you're actually just giving instructions to a designer, in this case a designer that's a robot, but you're still, still just giving instructions. You don't need to drag and drop things and do your own uh, design work. That means all of this can be done on a mobile phone. And yeah, you can, you can use an app to actually create full websites. Uh, I sometimes say that like the, the ultimate test for the grid is if you're in a bar with a friend and you, get, you come, come up with a business idea, you should be able to use the system to have a product launch site with crowdfunded pre-orders before the second beer is empty. Okay, so how, does, how do we actually do that? And this is, by the way, something, I think this is pretty much the first time we are telling in public how we are doing AI web design. So, as said, uh, we have these three inputs. We have purpose, preferences, content, and out comes a website. Uh, what do we do with these things? So, for instance, with content, it's very important for us to understand what the content is. So, what we do is everything you put into the system, if it's text, we recognize what language it is in, what it's talking about, etc. If it's images, then we do a lot of analysis. What we try to do is find the salient region in the image, so the area that's kind of the, the important part of the picture. Uh, we detect faces, and then we also uh, detect negative space. And the reason for doing these things is to give the designer more options on how to, how to do things, like more information on, about the content. Because if there is a picture where you have just a little bit of uh, area of importance, you have a lot of emptiness, maybe it can be cropped, uh, or maybe you can use the negative space to put some text on top of the image, and you can use kind of similarly shaped images with scenes to uh, put them next to each other, provide, produce galleries, and so forth. So this is, this is very important area where we constantly keep uh, doing, doing more and trying to understand more about the content, just so that our virtual web designer can know what to do. And one, one important area is color, where, of, of course, when you provide your brand colors or your logo, uh, we can produce a lot of different palettes for the website, you can tell, okay, I want a muted or light or dark, formal, informal uh, coloring schemes. And we can also do this for every single uh, picture on the site, and then we can put those together. And here you can see on the right uh, some examples of, okay, we have this one, one image, 
It has these colors in the image, and there are very, very many different combinations of uh, color palettes that we could use in your website with that. And then, once we understand the content and once we have all, these, all this information available, uh, what we do next is we go through this uh, decision chain. We build up the possibilities of how the content could be put together. And that's, we call that the multiverse, where actually for any given web page out there, there are more ways to put that page together with the content than there are stars in the universe. Because just, just to give you an example, just to illustrate this, uh, think about a photo and uh, attribution. You know, we want to say, OK, who took the photo? Like, OK, this and this photographer. Like, where can you put that name of a photographer next to a, next to a picture? You can put it on the bottom, middle, right? You know, there are lots of, lots of ways. And when you start expanding that with all the content of a web page, uh, you reach this huge number of different combinations. So how do we how do we deal with that? Because obviously, it, you know, we need to find a good one. Not all of them are great. Uh, and so what we do is uh, we use uh, Markov chains, which are these chains of probabilities. Like if you do this, then it's more likely that you want to do this thing next or that thing next. Basically the same mechanism that, for instance, uh, people use for AI-composed music. Uh, we use these to drive the decisions, like, OK, uh, what kind of header we want to use on the site, where do we want to put a call to action, all these things. Like, each of these decisions we navigate through these probabilities. So what's actually the output? Uh, here uh, are some, some examples of uh, sites created by our beta users. Uh, there's thousands of uh, grid sites out there, so this is only a very, very uh, small, small grouping. And uh, I think, you know, for somebody who has only been doing web design for two years, as our AI is only that old, I think the results are pretty okay. I mean, if you have a two-year-old kid, what kind of web design do they do? But uh, yeah, the, the important thing here is uh, each of these sites is uniquely designed for that particular purpose, that particular content, that particular set of preferences. So even though there are a lot of commonalities you can see between the sites, each of them still has this kind of unique character, which uh, because the designer actually, there's, there's no template. The designer actually went through the content, figured out how to put it together, and made these des design decisions for every single page. Imagine how, for instance, uh, let's say Amazon's product catalog. Would that sell better if, uh, if each of the pages was actually arranged so that you know, the product pictures are shown in a nice way together with the text and all that? This is something that uh, nobody's doing because, you know, there are not enough designers out there. But uh, an AI doesn't get bored doing a thousandth or ten thousandth uh, product page. So that's, uh, that's uh, something where I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing I should say also here is that if you actually go to one of these sites, they might look different today because the other thing that's great about having an automated process, having an AI, is that the AI can, can learn, it can improve all the time, 24-7. And what we do is when the AI learns a new trick, we actually go and redesign everybody's sites to the latest uh, and greatest possibilities given by the AI. So that means everybody's sites, even if you don't touch your website, your site will get better every day. So that's, that's pretty great. Um, so where we are with the product, um, we're currently in a closed beta. We have about uh, 64,000 uh, founding members who are 
participating. We are letting a couple hundred in every day. And actually, we have uh, stopped taking pre-orders for the product. But uh, the uh, organizers here asked me to allow you, if you like, to uh, pre-order, uh, become a founding member on, on the grid, and get access to the system. So if you're, if you're interested, there's a URL there that's going to be open for a couple days, still after the conference, and which you can use to get your founding membership. But yeah, that's uh, AI-driven web design. And I think if you, if you go back to the beginning, uh, I think this is at least a reasonable first uh, way to actually solve the web pro website problem, where people only need to produce their own content, and the web design will happen for them, and the sites don't have to look all the same. So thank you very much. <laughs>